What's up guys, welcome back to DCA. So today what we're gonna do is talk about crypto portfolio management in the setting of a bear market. So with the market showing a lot of weakness over the last few weeks, I'm getting a lot of questions asking me, you know, I have a bunch of altcoins, what do you think I should do? Or, you know, I have altcoins and Ethereum. Should I be selling my altcoins and buying Ethereum? Should I be selling my altcoins, buying Bitcoin? Should I sell my Ethereum and buy Bitcoin? Should I even be holding crypto? I'm getting questions like this daily. So I want to address this topic because I don't think there's one single perfect answer. This video is gonna be a pretty long video. So what I'm going to do is put chapters down in the description below. So if there are parts that you know I've covered in the past because I'm gonna go over some of the basic concepts that I talk about often on the channel. So if you guys like this type of content, hit like and subscribe. Don't forget to head over to the Discord channel where you can sign up for the DCA Index Risk Model. It's the model shown here down below. It's a trading view indicator that I've coded using a machine learning algorithm in order to optimize the values of the model, which help to identify the market cycle peaks. So you see in 2013, 2017, and in 2021, as well as the market cycle bottoms. So it's basically showing you the best times to be getting out of the market and the best times to be getting into the market. It's a free trading view indicator. You can sign up for it on Discord. So with that said, let's do it. So first and foremost, beyond the fact that the price has dropped rapidly over basically, you know, since the beginning of November, the first or second week in November, we hit 69K and have been essentially in a free fall since that time. All right. Currently, we're sitting right at around $40,700. And more importantly and you know we've seen the price drop but we've seen many large price drops let's go back to you know january of 2021 we went from 41,000 all the way down to $30,000 you know in in a period of just a couple weeks so this drop hasn't necessarily been as fast as some of these other drops you know even in april down here to where we were in May. We went from, you know, 64K all the way down to 30K. And that was just, you know, maybe six weeks. So this hasn't been the most rapid drop, but what has happened is we've dropped below the 20 week and we've dropped below the 50 week. And we talk about this all the time. And, you know, I just wanna show it quickly for people that are new to the channel. Every time we drop below the 20, we've headed down to the 50 week. Every time we have not been able to hold the 50 week, we've headed down to the 200 week. You know, it's happened here, here in 2018, in February, we lost the 20 week, headed down to the 50 week. Then we lost the 50 week. And where did we go? Sure enough, down to the 200. And you know, it's happened literally every time in Bitcoin's history. You lose the 20, you head down to the 50. You lose the 50, you head down to the 200. We've also seen this happen at the start of every bear market. Every time we have lost the 50 week, a new impending bear market has started. And currently we have lost the 20 and the 50 week. And now the next, you know, there's other, there's some other um, price points in between, but historically the 200 week has been nearing the bottom of the market in every single cycle. Okay. So the 2014 cycle, the 2017 cycle, and now currently we have dropped below and we're going to need to see if we head down to the 200, even during COVID when we dropped below. I guess that would be the, you know, the one outlier saying that we did not start a bear market at that point. But at the end of the day, this is a black swan event. So, you know, a, a very rare event, but nonetheless, we sort of held the, the uh, 200 week as the level of support where we bounced off and then started the bull market. Okay, guys, so the whole reason that we're discussing Bitcoin right now, during the setting of a bear market, and we've talked about this several times, when you're approaching portfolio management, you basically want to be in a position where if you're exposing yourself to the cryptocurrency asset class, you want to diminish your downside risk. If we are heading into a situation where we're about to enter a bear market, which I think is entirely within the realm of possibilities. To ignore this fact, I think is to be naive and to simply, you know, it's like seeing smoke coming out of the house and not suspecting that there's potentially a fire. 
When you look at this chart, we're looking at Bitcoin and all of the top altcoins. I mean, the bottom line is it's just giving you more downside protection. It may still go down. And in fact, if you look here, there were points where it was down nearing 80% or slightly more than 80%. But if you look at the altcoins, people FOMO'd back in, got caught, and then in very rapid order, you know, these altcoins were down from, you know, a place of being down 30% to within just a few months, all down 90% or more. All of them, every single one of the top altcoins was down 90% or more by the end of 2018 into early 2019. And Bitcoin, you can see here, while yes, it was down quite a bit, look at the difference between the protection, the downside protection Bitcoin was offering you in relation to the altcoins. If we're in a bear market, what's likely going to happen is you're going to see Bitcoin fall. Yes, just like it has been. Everything else is going to fall too, but the altcoins are going to get absolutely annihilated. And you're starting to see that right now. A lot of these altcoins <clears throat> within just the past, last few weeks, sure, they were outperforming Bitcoin in the bull market like they always do. But now you see, I mean, these these altcoins, which were, were just outperforming Bitcoin, are rapidly getting to a point where they're not outperforming Bitcoin anymore. In fact, Bitcoin over the last few weeks, in spite of getting hammered every single day, is outperforming most altcoins now over, you know, since basically the last couple of weeks of December. You know, you don't hear about this often because it's not popular and it's not, you know, it's not a simple way to think about the market. But the fact of the matter is Bitcoin is going to give you more downside risk protection during the bear market. So that's why when people ask me, what is my strategy? I typically tell them it's dollar cost averaging primarily into Bitcoin and then into some into Ethereum and then a very small percentage into the altcoins. Sure, Bitcoin's not offering you the same sort of upside potential that the altcoins are, but typically it starts to move the market before everything else. It's going to, in other words, it's going to go up before everything else. So having that position in Bitcoin helps you to then, once Bitcoin starts to move, then you can move out of Bitcoin and start to move into the altcoins because typically profits that are taken from Bitcoin then move into the altcoins. It's how it goes every single cycle. Bitcoin's starting to move. You're starting to take profits out of Bitcoin, moving them into altcoins. Then the altcoins are starting to move. You're seeing, you're starting to see things 2x, 3x, 4x, etc. Then once Bitcoin really starts to go, it typically has a large pullback and you see the altcoins go parabolic. And that's why during that time, you're taking profits that you accrued during the bear market. So, you know, you're buying Bitcoin at 9,000. You're buying Bitcoin at 6,000. You're buying Bitcoin at 4,000, at 3,000. Then once you start to move, so, you know, once it starts reaching that all-time high, like it did in November and December, this is right when you start to see the altcoins go. It's just as simple as that, guys. You see Bitcoin hold the 20-week moving average as support. Bitcoin starts to rally, then the altcoins start to rally. You know, profits are taken from Bitcoin, you move them into altcoins. And this way, in addition to that, you're able to move them into some newer altcoins that people are excited about. If you're just sitting on a bunch of altcoins from this market cycle, you know, these, whatever, whatever you're investing in right here, just simply may not be, you know, it, it may not be the, the altcoins that people care about. For instance, you know, Solana, Luna, et cetera, AVAX. These are all ones that I'm invested in currently, but at the end of the day, you don't know what people will be excited about. Back in 2017, people were excited about an entirely different spectrum of altcoins during this market cycle. Just look at, you know, um, you, you have things like IOTA, you have EOS, things like that. Sure, they did all right this market cycle, but they didn't do anything compared to, or, you know, like another good example, a classic example, in fact, uh, is XRP. So if we just look at the list here, these are the top 10 altcoins during last market cycle. Stellar Lumens, NEM, IOTA, uh, Nano, XRP, NEO. None of those did anything 
relative to the newer speculative altcoins. So even if you're holding these altcoins through this cycle into the next cycle, in all likelihood, there's going to be a whole new range of altcoins that people are excited about next cycle. And then, you know, you're going to have these people like you get now that are invested in these coins who bought at the top and hold through the cycle. And they're going to be disappointed when many of them don't recover. Like we saw many of these didn't recover. That sort of lays out the foundation for why I believe that, you know, you need to consider your portfolio. You need to consider how your portfolio is constructed because we've shown that the altcoins get absolutely hammered in the setting of a bear market. Even if you go back to May, I'm not going to lay it all out here like I just did for the 2017 cycle. But if you go back to May and you look when Bitcoin dropped below its 20 week moving average, somewhere right around here. From this point, the first or second week of May, you know, Bitcoin was way down. Clearly, it went from 60,000 all the way down to around 30,000. The altcoins were down much, much more than that. Many of them approaching, uh, you know, a point where they were down 70% or more. So we, we saw a very similar thing happen in May, it, you know, on a smaller level, on a micro level. We saw Bitcoin drop down 50% in a short order. And what was the first coin to rally? It was Bitcoin. Then everything else came up after Bitcoin did. So, you know, we, we've we mentioned many, you know, we've laid this all out over the last months. I, and I've been saying repeatedly and saying repeatedly, once we got below the 20, it was concerning. Once we got below the 50, it was very concerning. You know, we're sort of in a place where if you're not paying attention to this and you're, you're just watching your average YouTube channel out here telling you, don't worry, it's going to bounce back up, you know, buy these altcoins. Those people are on YouTube to make money and that's it. You know, this is what you need to be watching for. Anyone telling you anything different is being disingenuous. That's the bottom line. I'm not saying that this has to be the start of the bear market. I'm saying the writing is on the wall that it is. So it's at minimum worth watching for. Now, the question I'm frequently asked is this, and that is, you know, what is what is your opinion on if I'm holding these altcoins? What do you suggest I do? And the first thing I'll say is this. I can't necessarily tell you what you should do with your your portfolio. Um, this, everything I'm saying here is not financial advice. It's simply how I approach the market through a data driven perspective, not an opinion based perspective, data driven. So I think there's these five key questions you have to ask yourself. And they're not necessarily in this order. First is, and we'll start with number five, actually. What is your belief about the market? I have my thoughts on the market, which I'm backing up with data, but that doesn't mean they're right. Just because something has happened in the past doesn't mean it has to happen again. So you have to consider what do you believe is going to happen? If you think that we're about to, you know, make a reversal right here, you know, at some level of support at maybe 40,000 or so, then perhaps you don't want to get out of your altcoins. Perhaps you want to sit on them. Okay, so that's definitely, you know, your opinion. It matters more than any YouTubers or, you know, any any Twitter post or any article you read. You have to, at the end of the day, act on what you believe. Now, you can go to those sources to inform your decisions, certainly. Um, and I, in fact, I recommend that as long as you don't gather so many opinions that you're sort of, you know, get into a position of paralysis by analysis, as it's called. And that simply means you're in a place where you've heard so many opinions, so many different opinions, and you have so many different views on whatever the subject is that you can't reasonably sort through them. I suggest finding a few sources that you trust and that you think have your best interest in mind and sticking with, you know, those sources. Once you start getting into a position where you're, you know, you're reading 10 or 15 different things and each one says something different, well, then it can become very difficult to sort of do anything with conviction. So I think that's the first point. So the second thing we'll talk about, are you in profit on your altcoins? So if you're in profit, if you're in profit right now, given what we know, 
that were below these various, um, you know, these various price points, you may want to consider taking some degree of profits right now. It simply makes sense based on everything we know about the market in this position. It, the altcoins especially are going to get hammered if this trend continues, right? So if you're in profit, why not lock in some of your profits? That's, and, and again, this is my perspective. Why not lock in some of your profits if you're sitting at a position where that's the case at the moment? Now, if you're at a big loss, th then you know the situation becomes much trickier. And like I said, there's no perfect answer for you. Um, you know, everyone asks me, well, you know, I have all these altcoins. What should I do with them? Well, you know, you kind of have to judge based on your total situation. If you have a bunch of altcoins that are sitting at a loss and the downtrend continues, that loss is going to exponentially grow from here. It's not going to get smaller if we enter into a bear market. I mean, I showed you how, you know, there were some small um, relief rallies that happened sort of early in the bear market. And then after that, it went from where the coins were down 50% for a bit up to the point where they were down maybe 25% from their all-time high to the point where within a few months they were down 90% or more. So if you're at a loss right now, all I can say to you is this, realize that if the bear market starts, you haven't seen anything yet. I mean, the losses you're experiencing right now, the losses you may or may not have experienced in May, those are minuscule to what may come. Consider something like Cardano. It was up to, you know, a dollar and a quarter or so in 2017. At points in 2019, it was at nearing two cents. So think about that, you know, consider a, portf a portfolio full of altcoins that right now is worth, let's pretend, let's pretend that it's worth uh, $10,000. We'll just pick a number. Consider that if this is a bear market and you have all altcoins, that portfolio will likely at some point be worth around $1,000 or $500 or $300. That is a $10,000 portfolio that may be worth $300, okay, or a $100,000 portfolio all in altcoins. That may be worth $3,000 at some point in the bear market, again, if we head into one. Based on everything we know about this asset class and, you know, the behavior of altcoins during the setting of a bear market. I, you know, I, I realize that what I'm saying sounds terrifying and it sounds like I'm spreading FUD. But guys, I'm actually, you know, in my opinion, I'm not. I own a lot of altcoins. I own Bitcoin. I'm bullish on crypto long term. But the bottom line is it's a speculative market. Think back to the dot com boom in uh, the 2000s, early 2000s, 1999. You had these you had these billion dollar market cap valuations on companies that no longer exist. And something very similar is true for crypto. You have, look at, look at the, you know, the market caps of your top coins. We have numerous, numerous multi-billion dollar market cap coins that likely you won't even know of anymore in four years. You'll have forgot about them. Okay, so the, the I think this is so important to, you know, I know everyone doesn't want to hear this, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's so important that you keep what's happening in perspective because you stand to lose a lot of money if you, you know, if you don't act decisively about whatever you're going to do. If you're going to hold on to them, be prepared to hold on to them and be prepared to be at a loss. What you don't want to do is hold them. And then when they're down 93%, then you panic sell or when they're down 90%, because when they're down that far, you might as well keep holding them because they're essentially worthless. All right. So number two is what percent of your portfolio is held in altcoins? If you're holding a very large percentage of altcoins, you know, it goes right along with everything I was just saying, you're going to get wrecked if we head into a bear market. If we keep going, if this is just a large correction, a new type of correction that we haven't seen before, that 
doesn't typically happen even in the stock market because when you go below the 50 week, you know, I've showed in prior videos, when you go below the 50 week, even in the stock market, you typically are heading down and you're not gonna reach your prior all time high at least for six months, typically much longer, all right? So if you're holding a large percentage of altcoins, even if you're holding Bitcoin, you're gonna be down if we go into a bear market. It's the bottom line, you're gonna be down because everything's gonna go down. It's just what's going to go down more than everything else. And Bitcoin is likely going to go down less, all right? So number three, are you overextended or investing money that you cannot afford to lose? And this is perhaps, you know, right up there with number five, along with what are your personal beliefs? And this one's simple. If you are, you know, again, not financial advice. If you're investing money you can't afford to lose and we go into a bear market, well, you know, I think uh, everyone, everyone, everyone says don't invest money you can't afford to lose. So, you know, I feel bad that that's going to happen to some people, but I think the warnings are out there that you shouldn't be doing this. Um, you know, you can't be investing money that if you lose it, you're going to not be able to pay your bills or whatever, because at that point you're gambling. That's all you're doing. You're gambling. You're gambling your, your life away. Um, I wish there was something better to say, but that's the bottom line. So if you're in this situation, if you're in the category of number three, you really need to consider what you're doing. And again, we're at a place right now where, where these coins still have multi-billion dollar valuations. I, if it were me, I would be liquidating some of those positions, getting in cash and making sure that myself and my family were taken care of and that um, I wouldn't be in a place where I won't be able to pay my bills six months from now or pay a hospital bill if I needed to because I'm invested in altcoins, all right? Or even Bitcoin for that matter. You shouldn't be invested in anything with money that you can't afford to lose. I don't even care if it's a stock market. If it's money you can't afford to lose, at minimum, put it, you know, put it in uh, like an interest earning DeFi account if you need to do something with it. At least, you know, you're in a safer place in that position you know, if you feel the urge to be putting money into something that you can't afford to lose, okay? So number four kind of goes right along with that. Where are you at in your investment life cycle? Are you just out of college? Okay. You can probably be riskier with your investment decisions because you have, you know, a lifetime ahead of you. If you're invested just out of college, first of all, that's, you know, great. Lots of people don't start investing until much later in life. And, you know, you stand, you stand to benefit more likely investing in some riskier assets, because if you make some risky investments and some of them pan out for you, you can easily put yourself ahead, you know, a decade or more. Um, whereas if you get wiped out, well, you still have many years ahead of you to grind that nine to five. So, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, taking some risky moves in the beginning can really benefit you. And crypto in general is a risky move. It just is, okay? So the other side of the coin would be, are you near retirement? And this goes right along with number three. If you're near retirement and you're over-invested, you know, you need to quickly, and I mean quickly, take some, you know, take some measures to uh, secure yourself. Guys, this is my general philosophy on investing in the setting of a bear market. I know, you know, it all sounds like doom and gloom on the other side of that coin. And you can go back and watch the video I just did talking about someone who invested in Ethereum during the bear market. The bear market is also offering you the opportunity to accrue life-changing wealth. So if you're going to be someone who just walks away and then only starts investing once we are in the, you know, in a bull market, you're, you're just massively limiting your upside potential. But if you're someone who's investing, you know, when no one else in retail is in the market, all through here, all through 2018, all through 2019, all through early parts of 2020, if you are the guy investing in those stages of the market, you're setting yourself up for your future. If you're the guy who's waiting until right here, sure, you might make a few bucks, but 
it's not going to be anything significant. But if you're the guy, you know, even if you don't want to be investing in these stages, if you just want to wait until it gets really bad, you know, that's likely not a bad strategy either. So personally, I use a dynamic dollar cost averaging strategy using the DCA index. It's a risk model that I've made. And, you know, it just kind of helps me guide my, you know, my investments through the bear market. You know, we showed the guy who invested in the bear market with 50,000, about $55,000 into Ethereum using a dynamic strategy. He invested $55,000 and, you know, at the peak, he was up near $1.3 million. Right now, he's probably sitting at around 900,000. Okay. So having a plan, having a strategy, you know, looking at these different, these different factors that we talk about, namely these, considering how they relate to you, it can save you a lot of heartache and it can save a lot of dollars in your, in your bank account by simply asking yourself these questions and then acting decisively, not sitting around, not waiting, not waiting until we're at 30,000 or waiting until we're wherever having a plan and sticking to it most times is going to benefit you in the long run. So this is one man's opinion. Do what the, what you will. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. If you guys like this type of content, hit like and subscribe. And until next time, as usual, see ya.